growing up, I was pretty, pretty a shy person. I couldn't really walk up to someone and say just hello. Much more even talk to a girl. <laughs> it was that part. But in terms of elderly people who are successful and rich, it's so real. I'll give you a case. We want to make a sale to a big church and we just want to meet the head pastor. You have to go to the secretary, go to the administrator, go to A, B, C, D before you eventually get to the top. And that's going to take you about a month or two. But beyond that, you have to make concrete efforts to break that or else you really won't get your business anywhere. You have to overlook how you feel sometimes about approaching that man. You have to just step up and say, Oga, how are you? My name is Nana. I have something good for you. I had this issue with purchasing a, an airplane ticket. Now, purchasing an airplane ticket, which in the US was two clicks, there was a multi-step, multiple journey thing. And I felt, this doesn't make any sense. Why do I need to book it online, then go to a bank, get in line at a bank, to then make a payment, which isn't immediate. And then I got to now wait for an alert from a company to say, it's all done. Like, there's a simpler way, haven't, I mean, why aren't they doing it the simpler way? We're a startup and um, relatively unknown. <laughs> it would be difficult for someone to give you money. What we're trying to do is build credibility first. If there's one thing about doing business in Africa is, uh, and creating networks is, it's a bit cruel, but don't waste time knocking at the bottom. Uh, it's worth your while going straight to the top. So there are two fact, two portions about the power distance. One, in business, in making a sale, it slows down the process. The way to solve that is you actually try and get people who directly know him, who can refer you to him. But when you come to a personal um, problem of being able to step up to people, when you, uh, let's say, a naturally shy person, or you've been brought up in Africa, so there's this big gap between these big men, there are some steps you can take to overcome that. Start with the people you know. That's, that's what I say. Always start with the people you know. So, thriving on the initial contacts, you can actually make referrals or make mentions, which carries the trust along because in this community of the Christian community, pastors do know other pastors. So, if you've done something good for A and A can confirm it's good for him, he passes on that trust. And so, that's the first point. And I ha we have an advantage there because our parents were pastors and we could actually connect with other pastors. But beyond that, let's say step, in top, step into a pastor who doesn't know anyone who knows you. It's really about the first impressions a person gets about you when you meet him. Right from the time you call him on the phone and you book an appointment with him and meet him and talk about your product. Uh, you'll be surprised at what you can do with LinkedIn. A lot of people don't use it as well as you should really, but people are generally very responsive on LinkedIn. Uh, what we did was we found the head of the organization and uh, sent them a message about our project. But we also did name drop quite a lot. So we used the credibility built around the Real Academy of Engineering. And uh, when people start to see familiar, reputable names, they take your message a lot more seriously. So I said, okay, I'm going to challenge this. So I, I had, uh, I, I arranged a meeting with the airline in question and I asked them, I mean, this is not normal, what you're... There, there's a f telephone explosion, there's so many telcos. Why aren't you just making this available to people on the phone? Right? I, n I understand the internet and I understand the laptop, but not a, lot, not a lot of people have broadband access and so on, but the data, data packages on the phones are way cheaper, so make it available on the phone, you'll sell more. But you have to understand something, in the, in the West, in the US as well, Large organizations outsource these things, right? So it's not like, oh, it's any different. No, most times in the, when it's not your core, when it's not your core operation or your core business, it's best for you to outsource it. So this is what, let me give you an example. We went to this man's house and presented the product to him that this is what it does and we think it's of great value and hear what he has to say. And in there, he then referenced us to that meeting that, okay, we have this meeting, come and show it to all the pastors. So we really had strong benefits from our initial connection, something that till date has been very, very, rele very relevant. We, it's like, start with the people you know. That's, that's what I say, always start with the people you know. 
one of the relationships we've built, uh, which could be very influential uh, for the business when we're ready, is uh, with a major credit card company in Nigeria. The difference is we didn't go to them asking for money. We went to them saying, hey, this is where we are. This is what we're doing. We think we'll be ready in this in such a amount of time. Just watch out for us. They ended up offering more help than we actually solicited for. We approached DHL to say, well, we're running this boot camp in Kenya and we need to ship our items. And we went to the head of operations um, in, I think it's in the UK. He said yes immediately. Um, but he said, well, I don't see any reason why not, but let me connect you to the person heading the CSR department. And well, what that means is that as soon as he said yes, his subordinate who is heading the CSR department cannot really say no. So I, I felt, oh, okay, the issue here is there needs to be someone to give those folks a turnkey solution to this problem. And that turn, so they need to outsource to a different company. They need to outsource, a company needs to give them this and say, look, I will own and operate. You will get the satisfaction and you will pay me for getting satisfaction. I made that proposition to them. What if I did all this for you on my platform? Would you subscribe to it? Yeah, they say, yeah, if it was free. And I'm like, okay. But then I'll take a cut of every transaction. And I said, okay. And then we negotiate the cut. So in that meeting, basically, we identified what the problem was. We identified what the solution was. We identified that they were willing to pay for it after we negotiated. You'd be amazed how, in quotes, a big man would be so happy to hear you come up to him and tell him what you're doing. They are so excited and they want to give pieces of advice and connect you to the right people. As a matter of fact, some of the big tractions we had to show on our pitch day was because of referrals from a big man to another big woman who was ahead of a bank in Southern Valley. Sorry about if you follow the rules and appeal to people's interest, there's a likelihood that they would respond to you even if, even if they are at the, at the very top. You could spend ages speaking to people at the bottom and your emails would never leave their inbox. As a matter of fact, we just stay in their trash. So go straight to the top, there's nothing to lose. And um, if your project is as exciting as you think it is, then, then it should be fine. Yeah.